It's so nice to be here. Thank you, Doug. Um, I'm Hannah Schwadron, and I'll be having an interview with Golem, which is really exciting. Um, the artist, Julie Weitz, as I was just saying. Um, she was here earlier, a few of you <laughs> met her. Um, and she's just great. Actually, we know each other because she's a good friend of my older sister, who's also a visual artist, Julia Schwadron. And Julie Weitz and Julia Schwadron are good friends. Um, and so with Julie's new project, My Golem as the Great Dominatrix, um, after having just written my first book, The Case of the Sexy Jewess, Dance, Gender, and Jewish Joke Work, I was really excited um, to learn about Julie's current project and kind of move us from this kind of odd uh, relationship of watching um, a good friend of my sister doing all of these amazing things out in the world, suddenly working on stuff um, with so much um, more explicit overlap with my work, and then approaching Julie, can I, can I, um, you know, potentially <laughs> get to know my golem um, at some point? Um, and Julie was really open to it, um, and this is. This is the first chance that um, we're meeting in person, and it's just, it's so nice um, to have this opportunity. I'm admittedly nervous. Um, <laughs> Julie didn't give me quite, you know, all the information I needed, and this is my first time having a live interview with a golem. Um, <laughs> so what's, just to be fully transparent, I have these um, wipes, wipes, she gave me the white piece. Yes. Yes. It must be a source of some shame for you. I will put it out there for you all in the most um, kind of copacetic way. So basically, there's no um, danger that I know of here, but I do have the white piece. Um, so if anybody at any point feels that they just want to raise a hand, um, if they're starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable um, as it builds, Julie did let me know that I can take the YP and just take the olive off so we know that the golem is deactivated at that point moving from Emmet to just Matt right so this is something that the two of you all have worked out as part of the initial parameters so um, it's not part of my training as an MFA PhD in dance studies but um, you do what you have to do and um, yeah so we're just going to get started, a couple of questions, and then um, it's wonderful that we have a very timely journal special issue in Shofar magazine on the modern Jewess, um, and so we're doing a spotlight on my golem um, as the great dominatrix for that special issue, so please look forward to that, and then um, thank you in advance for any kind of dramaturgical support towards that end as I'm working to cold notes and put this research together um, in a way that is uh, honoring the gender, gender queer nature of the figure um, and um, considering sort of the parameters also of uh, where we're at with intersection of critical race studies and Jewish gender studies um, and this sort of always already sexualized nature of the U.S. Jewess. Okay, so we'll learn much more about it. I'm getting a lot of nods. Um, here we'll start with a video, thank you, um, of a shortened version of My Golem as the Great Dominatrix.
for letting us watch that. Um, it raises, I think, a lot of questions for us about what the heck is going on. Um, <laughs> but also, there are some new things. I've seen a longer version of it, I've seen the shorter version. There are so many layers in what that might mean um, and what what we're really undertaking in that project of cultural representation and autobiographical play, uh, working inside and outside of the tradition. Um, and it's very deep. <laughs> it is clearly very deep. So my, just to get a couple of the facts straight. Um, my golem came out after the Charlottesville rally as a kind of response piece. And so that brings us back to what, September 2017? Yeah, and then it was an Instagram project of Julie White who, who um, tell me if there's another kind of way to say this, but who, who made you, okay? And, um, and then people kept responding to these short Instagram performances as my golem and, and then just asking for more. Um, and a curator, Jessica Rich, commissioned a two-channel video billboard that played every 15 minutes for a minute on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Appropriate. Did anybody see that? I know because we have a lot of Los Angeles representation here. No, we missed that somehow. Okay, so Sunset Boulevard video billboard, um, one minute performances by um, this beautiful artist. And, and then you were invited, no, oh, by you. Okay, so Julie at that point sort of was a moot point, right? Because my golem was there in the light. Okay, I will start to figure out um, who's who in all of this, thank you. Um, if I ever get that wrong, just don't, don't hesitate to tell me. Um, and then you were invited to do a kind of project in a pool with two male sirens, which was sort of a mikvah of sorts, as it seemed to kind of come across right, kind of opening yourself and indulging in the ritual cleanse. That's what I saw too, yeah. Um, and then this kind of becoming of a dominatrix and this interest in world domination started to come out from there. And so you and this inflatable globe have become quite um, the intimate, intimate. Yeah, great. Um, sure, yeah. Oh, there we have my golem, the globalist, which is an archival, uh, an archival inkjet print from 2018. Okay, so we're seeing these also in a 2D form as well as 3D um, representations and video art um, experiments. And is this this must be out in the desert in, in what California? Okay. And so you're just kind of going out there and you are the globalist. <laughs> That's you. So now, okay, so there's you, my golem, as the great dominatrix, and then my golem now understanding themselves. It, okay, yes, you deserve a pat on the back for your. Yeah, take off your belt. Oh, oh, take off her belt. <laughs> First? We know what that is, some of us. Do we? Anybody? Sphiroid. That's right. Which is? Could you tell us a little bit about what the Sephirot is, or anybody? No, not also is the Tree of Life. Yes. It's a, a, a very important part of Kabbalah, beginning the Sefer Bagir, continuing the Sefer Zohar, and it is several things simultaneously. It is a Ladder, ladder that connects our reality to the reality of God, and it is a reality that the bottom, of which, the bottom of which Malchut already enters you into the realm of God, and it's a ladder, the uppermost part of which Keter is only when you begin to be in the realm of God, 
but it spins conceptually. So that one side is considered female, one side is considered male, one side is considered passive, the other side is considered active. But if it's spinning, male becomes female, female becomes male, active, passive, passive, active. And it in, in, in turn speaks of a God that is simultaneously genderless, disconnected from us, and connected to us by virtue of the grammar of the words in Hebrew for God. Yud Hey Vav Hey El Elohim being grammatically masculine, God's presence among us, Shekhinah, is grammatically feminine. So God is both apart from us and a part of us, both masculine and feminine, and neither of the above. And there's more. That's just the tip of the sphere of the iceberg. But we're having a five-hour seminar that Doug is conducting this evening at midnight in which we'll talk about this for about in more detail. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, that was incredible, wasn't that? Um, anybody need a wipey at this point? Okay. Judith, you had something to say. Are you sure those aren't Hanukkah guilt? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a sort of um, critique from the peanut gallery over here, but um, I think it's probably not the first time you're getting this kind of slack, right? Because, I mean, we take a look at what you're doing and I, I can only imagine the type of feedback that you've been getting. And um, I've talked to Julie about this in some length. Um, not everybody has been so generous or um, knowledgeable to read the symbols as they're intended, right? Or can we say something about intention here in such a singular way? Or it, there, it strikes me that there's some kind of underlying paradoxical component, almost like the doing and an undoing somehow. Just all of it at once. It's the, uh, yeah. You, you wouldn't be able to say, you, will, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't say it. So we are the ones who are trying to figure out what this amounts to. Yeah, and I imagine on that, the truth. And I mean, depending on where you perform this or where you show the work, I'm sure the reaction is quite different. Um, are you always with Kabbalistic scholars in the room? That <laughs> bless your heart, she says, they say. Um, okay, well, yeah, no, there's some, I, I love this, um, this is, this is, you, you're connected, you're basically channeling Aunt Clara here on some level. This is Julie Weitz's great aunt, yeah, who um, is known for this particular image on the Wendy's Where's the Beef commercial. Did anybody remember that commercial? You remember that one, Where's the Beef? at the competing, the competing um, chain fast food restaurants, but at Wendy's, it was right between the buttons. And Aunt Clara Peller in 84, that was, yeah, no. But this is so, you're, t you're trying to remind, remind us that you come from a performance tradition, a long family, that's the truth. Um, that's the, um, and so for, right, because I've heard about this. This is this is the cousins club, um, and you, you, you sort of so you're saying somehow that's your fa that's your fa your grandfather, your grandfather. This is the Yudis Chaim uh, cousin club talent show in the mid '50s, and then so my understanding is that the cousins club met every year um, to show off their various skills and concerns, um, and that. Um, you, as um, a current day sort of extended member of the family, are you, well, we couldn't necessarily say you were biologically related. Um, yes, of the earth, in a, in, a, in a more organic sense. Right, it's of, it's of you, it's on you, you are of it. Um, something like that. Uh, uh, and so this group of people, you realize, are also part of your inheritance. It's fine. Nobody's worried about that. It's your own, or you're feeling modest. Yeah. Um, is there anything I can do to help you? Or show me how to help you. 
No, just continue. Keep talking about this. And so here we have the Sunset Boulevard image. Thank you, Andy. Um, and so that was 2018. And then this is a clip from your latest film, uh, Rituals of a Globalist. We know that that term is fairly charged. question posed by the artist herself, uh, which maybe some of us have been wondering as well throughout this conference and also through our own renditions of asking that question about Jewish art right now. Um, this term here, the globalist, that's been in the news lately. Um, it, uh, is that a response um, that you're taking this term on or is this something that you've um, sort of, that are part of your, uh, that's, uh, okay. Yeah, it's starting to be, I know, you don't come out very often in these kinds of public settings, but something like that, yeah. That's fine. But yeah, you know, you're fine. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit out of, out of hand for you, a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, just breathe. Can you breathe? Do, do, do you actually, I, that's a question I actually don't know, is do golems, have the capacity to breathe. You do, and you feel. Right, let's change the subject. There's something more about, I mean, are you single? Are you dating? <laughs> I imagine that's a big concern also. It's all on the questions of Jewish futurity, right? Something like that, you're getting a little upset with that. 